Dr. Gregory Horton here, three-time Olympic medalist and world champion in track and field. We have been saying it over and over and I hope that after watching this video, more clarity is given on why it is important to teach athletes the right things so they don't make uncalculated mistakes, give up their scholarships and then have no one or nothing to turn to. Many of those who are overseeing the athletes understand clearly that for athletes to move from high school into the pros, that they have less than 5% chances of being successful. And the athletes are still encouraged to do that. I am going to read an article that was done by a gentleman from The Observer on June 21st, 2021 by the name of Paul Reed. And he was actually talking to Glenn Mills. And everybody must know the legendary Glenn Mills, one of the most successful sprint coaches in the history of track and field. And he's saying from his own mouth that do care is needed to guide these young athletes. And he also said in the article that leaving high school and making the decision to sign professional contracts and go to college first is not the best option to take. So I'll read the article and then you can have your own opinion as to whether or not you agree or you disagree with what is being said. It says that Mr. Mills, who has guided the career of several world and Olympic champions, included triple world record holder Usain Bolt, as well as Johan Blake, Warren Weir, and Kim Collins. He said that great deal of assessment and research into the athlete's development pathway and the ability to be successful at the next level, great attention should be paid because it is not everyone who runs a fast time at champs is really designed to do well at the next level. Now, Mr. Mills is the president of the Racers Track Club and he was one of the panelists at the recent webinar by GC Foster College with the theme being Pathway to Elite Performance. And Mr. Mills is saying that success at the ISA Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championship was not a guarantee of success at the next level as a lot of these youngsters were not properly prepared for the transition and what it take for them to gain success. Now at the webinar, Mr. Mills gave you three options. Yes, three options. One, the athletes can take up a scholarship to the US where, he ha where they would have four years to continue developing in the sport while pursuing a degree. Uh, we have seen over the years that Mr. Mills heavily promoted this option. Uh, people from Camperdown, Ray Stewart and many others benefited from taking this option. One of the benefit, other benefits to this option is that a lot of the burden, the financial burden is passed on to US the U.S. collegiate system, and also it gives the athletes time to properly develop. And they, they too have the option to either finish that four year or they can leave before that. Now, if they do leave, it means that they may forego their scholarships and education, and they would now have to pay out of pocket if they want to pursue a degree on their own. The second option Mr. Mills pointed to is that the student can be a part-time student and a professional athlete. But you know that being a part-time student and a professional athlete in Jamaica is a very tough thing. If you're in the States, you might be able to do so because things are more convenient. You can provide um, for yourself in terms of a car, an apartment, and still have close proximity to training facilities, etc. And then the third option he elaborated on is to be a full-time professional athlete, which means 
that you know would go straight from high school straight into the professional ranks and he's saying that the athletes are not always ready to take on this challenge mr mill said that what i find is that most of them don't understand what it means to be a professional athlete and what professionalism demands one of the things i try to pass on to them is that you must understand that you have made a decision to earn a living from track and field as a professional athlete and as a result it requires you applying yourself as you would at any job at the workplace he went further to say that it is not a part-time occupation where you choose to train today when you feel like it and you don't train tomorrow because you don't feel like it he said that it is not like making appointment at a training facility because if you don't have the consistency you will never ever get to where you want to go he went further to say that these athletes would have a lot of difficulties with the transition from the kind of freedom that they have at the high school level as it relates to now becoming a professional athlete it continues he said a lot of these athletes who are trying to make the transition from amateur to professional have not had any kind of preparation physically mentally psychologically and otherwise and he said that to cope with the sudden change of becoming a professional athlete and so you find that the attrition rate of success is very low now if it's so low why do some of those people who oversee the athletes continue to encourage that they go pro straight out of high school i have not done a formal survey but less than five percent of them don't make it past the first stage and this is a quote by mr glenn mills and i will and i will repeat that i have not done a formal survey but less than five percent of them don't make it past the first stage and this is something that we should think about and look at keenly because mr glenn mills coach glenn mills has been in the business for over 50 years which means that he has the lived experience so i will take that five percent as a gospel when it comes to at least making the transition so it means that if you have 100 athletes leaving from high school to go pro yearly five of them will make it to the next level that is an extremely low number mr mills went on to say that success as a junior did not guarantee success at the other level either he said that when you look at the number of outstanding performances at the boys and girls championship and then you look at the number who actually succeed as a professional earning a living from the sport you will realize that the number is extremely low you know it pain my heart to know that those individuals who are encouraging young athletes to go professional that they would take on that task knowing that you have a better chance of winning the lotto than to be successful as a professional athlete i hope that those people who are in the position to make a difference will look at this and put measures in place to protect the athletes from these individuals and also from themselves i am dr gregory horton i thank you very much for listening have a blessed day